Let's find out. Joining me now is Alberta Premier Jason Kenney. Uh, Premier, the, the, your province, Ontario, all, everyone's dealing with blockades, so I want to start with there. The one at uh, Coots, at the border, uh, almost two weeks. Will you follow the lead of Ontario Premier Doug Ford, who called a state of emergency, um, and, and, and use more force to increase penalties and maybe enforcement? Well, we already had stronger laws than Ontario. Last year, we passed the Defense of Critical Infrastructure Act that gives the police enormous powers and very st uh, stiff uh, fines and penalties, including the power of imprisonment. Uh, we have made it clear to the RCMP, who is our provincial police service, uh, that they can and should use all of these powers. Uh, and in terms of the Emergency Act, uh, we have considered it, but we don't see how that would add any, any significant additional powers to our situation here. The Critical Infrastructure Defense Act, which you passed in May of 2020, um, I understand that, but according to that legislation, each day a site is blocked or damages a new offense, penalties up to 10,000 a day for the first offense, 25,000 for subsequent offenses, possible jail time of up to six months. I guess the question a lot of people are saying is, you got the law, what good is it if it's not enforced? Is it being enforced? Well, it, the first and only time it's been used uh, since it was adopted two years ago was against somebody who was charged with incitement to block critical infrastructure at Coots. Uh, we have um, reminded the RCMP uh, and made it clear to the public that that law is there purpose built for a situation like this. But Evan, you know full well that um, uh, politicians cannot uh, dictate enforcement tactics to the police so we are doing everything we can to support them in terms of policy and resources um, and we're clear about our expectation on enforcement right. they've got a very powerful law there and um, I but at the end of the day uh, they're dealing with a very fluid and, and difficult situation I have to respect their tactical uh, judgment on but when, where, and how to enforce. You have voice support for truckers who are against the vaccine mandate in the past. Uh, obviously, that was one of the triggers of this protest. Do you take any responsibility for giving credibility to the organizers who said, hey, this is great. We've got people like Premier Kenny. We can do this. And now um, you've been swallowed by the very beast you fed. No, come on, De Evan. I think the shoe has to be on the other foot. The prime minister adopted a policy with the trucker vax mandate uh, that has no compelling public health rationale. We have tens of millions of active Omicron infections across North America. The idea that a few thousand unvaccinated truckers who might test negative, by the way, crossing the border in their cabs in isolation somehow constitute a public health, health menace is ridiculous. It's bad public health theater. He provoked this situation. He's added fuel to the fire by essentially calling all of the protesters Nazis. And um, I, I think this what? has been a failure of leadership on the part of Ottawa, well, to well, be honest with you. Uh, I, I make no apologies for stating our view, um, which I did before these protests began. Okay, let, let me just speak. I want to tone the rhetoric down. I don't think he called all the truckers Nazis. He pointed out there are hateful groups. He dismissed them as a fringe group. And he did say during the election, there's a fringe group of racists. I understand that. what he said. Um, I want to talk about some of the elected officials, though, some of your former colleagues in the Conservative Party federally. Pierre Polyever, who's running for the leadership, said he's, quote, proud of the truckers right now. Is that hurting the cause for premiers like you to, to try to get rid of blockades when senior conservatives are um, supporting their cause? I don't think these folks care a whole lot about uh, comments like that. Uh, all I can say is this. You cannot be selective in the application of the rule of law. If you believe that it's wrong for people to block a railway or a pipeline because of their environmental convictions, then it's equally wrong for people to block a highway or a streets uh, because of their views on health po public health policy. So the, the law has to be blind, um, and uh, that is uh, something that no legislator should question, which is the, the very principle of the rule of law. Alberta is beginning to lift restrictions, uh, and there's always about timing. A lot of people say it's science. Some say you're, you're caving in to the truckers. It's political expediency. Why did you decide to do the lift? Well, the initial things we've done is to lift measures on kids because after two years of their lives being uh, disrupted by COVID and COVID restrictions, enough already. Uh, I, I, we just made a, a decision in totally, uh, re regardless of what's happening with protests and noise, that let's put kids first. Secondly, 
the proof of vaccination programs, so-called vaccine passports, no longer serve a defensible purpose. They were brought in partly to increase vaccination rates. We did that, but they've been frozen for nearly two months. And secondly, to reduce transmission amongst unvaccinated people at a time when they were more likely to be infected or transmit. That is no longer the case with the transmissibility of Omicron and the waning uh, defense of uh, vaccines against transmission. So we're following, look, you got to change your tactics as the disease changes and keeping these measures in place to be bloody minded in the face of protesters, I think would be indefensible. Okay, but but that's my question. What's the data here? Let, okay, here's what you said on January 27th. Let me just play you a, cli a clip, Premier. Now is not the right time uh, to be relaxing measures when the health hospitals under are under so much pressure. But uh, I very much hope that we can move towards uh, widespread relaxation of public health measures, including the proof of vaccination program uh, in the foreseeable future, uh, once we start to see the pressure in hospitals trend down. Okay, you said that was based on hospitalization rates. Those numbers, sir, haven't changed much in the, in the last two weeks. January 27th, 1,579 COVID patients in hospital. February 10th, 1,586 patients in hospital. I don't see the difference. So how can people see this other than political if the data is the exact same? Well, we're about three weeks past our Omicron peak here in Alberta. Uh, all of our trends are, go are going in the right direction. Positivity rate, new cases, total active cases, wastewater data, and new hospital admissions, which is the key leading indicator of pressure on the hospitals. So um, we know that that pressure is going to continue to abate. We're at 87% capacity for acute care uh, occupancy in our hospitals, which is lower than it has often been at this time of year. All right, can, can I just ask you one last question? And I hear this in the federal government as well, and I'm pressing the federal government to tell me the same thing. As soon as it is safe to do so, that's the nub of it. Who decides when it is safe? What is your definition of when it is safe? You're lifting mask mandates, others say uh, always bow into political pressure. There's no science behind it. What is your definition of when it is safe to lift restrictions? It's essentially when uh, COVID is not posing a risk of catastrophic outcomes in terms of our healthcare capacity. Uh, and Evan, the, the disease is changing. Our tactics need to change to address the changing disease. For example, right now, 40% of our uh, COVID acute care patients are there with and not for COVID. COVID is only an incidental condition for them. They're not being treated for COVID. So uh, this, th these are some of the facts that we have to take into account. In, in two of the past, uh, two of the three years prior to COVID, we had more patients in hospital in, in January and February than we do today. We were able to cope with it then. We, should, we are able to, de to cope with this now without the extraordinary measures uh, that have ha been in place in much of the past two years. All right, I got to leave it there. Alberta Premier Jason Kenney, always a pleasure, sir. Thanks. Thanks.